Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Once he started talking, the words came pouring out in a torrent, like some inner dam had burst. At first, I thought it was just normal teenage stuff, you know? Like, everyone feels awkward in their own skin sometimes. But it never went away, and it kept getting worse, and I... He broke off, reaching up to angrily swipe at the fresh tears leaking from his eyes. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I still don't. I just know that when I look in the mirror, it's not... It's not me looking back. It's like I'm trapped in the wrong body, and it makes me want to scream sometimes, and I don't know how to fix it. His voice cracked on the last word, and Janet gathered him into her arms again, rocking him gently as his thin frame shook with silent sobs. Oh, baby, she breathed. I am so, so sorry you've been dealing with this all alone. I can't imagine how scary and isolating it must have been. Caleb just clung to her, face pressed into the crook of her neck as he tried to get his hitching breaths under control. There was a strange sense of lightness unfurling in his chest, the barest beginnings of relief. It was as if saying the words out loud, giving shape to the formless dread that had haunted him for so long, had begun to loosen its stranglehold on his heart. Eventually, his tears tapered off again, and he pulled back, swiping his sleeve across his blotchy face. Janet smoothed his hair back from his forehead, her touch infinitely tender. Thank you for trusting me with this, she said softly. I know how hard it must have been to open up, but I promise you, Caleb, we are going to figure this out together, okay? You don't have to go through this alone anymore. Caleb managed a small, wobbly nod, not trusting his voice. Janet smiled and leaned in to press a kiss to his forehead. I love you so much, sweetheart. Nothing is ever going to change that. And we'll take this as slow as you need to. There's no rush to have it all figured out right now. She stood up, giving his shoulder a final squeeze. Why don't you try to get some sleep? I know you must be emotionally wrung out after all that. We can talk more in the morning. Caleb nodded again, suddenly acutely aware of the bone-deep exhaustion weighing down his limbs. He felt like he could sleep for a week. Janet helped him out of his rumpled clothes and into a soft pair of pajamas, then tucked the blankets around him like she used to when he was small. Sweet dreams, she whispered, brushing a kiss across his brow. I'll see you in the morning. Caleb mumbled a good night, already halfway to sleep, before she even turned off the light. For the first time in longer than he could remember, the tightness in his chest and the static in his head had quieted, leaving behind a blessed emptiness. He slept deeply and dreamlessly, waking late the next morning to sun slanting across his face. He lay still for a moment, blinking up at the ceiling and trying to orient himself. Memories of the previous night filtered back in fragments. The skirt, his mother's gentle understanding, the cathartic release of finally unburdening himself. It felt surreal, almost like it had happened to someone else. But the raw, tender feeling in his chest and the gluey heaviness of his eyelids told him it had been all too real. Caleb sat up gingerly, scrubbing a hand over his face and trying to tamp down the flutter of anxiety in his gut at the thought of facing his mother. A soft knock came at the door, making him startle. Caleb, you awake, sweetie? Yeah, he croaked, then cleared his throat and tried again. Yeah, I'm up. Janet poked her head in, giving him a warm smile. I thought I heard you rustling around. How are you feeling? Caleb shrugged, picking at a loose thread on his comforter. Okay, I guess. Just tired. And kind of embarrassed, to be honest. You have nothing to be embarrassed about, Janet said firmly, coming over to sit beside him on the bed. I am so proud of you. You know that? Coming out like that? Sharing something so personal? It takes a lot of courage. You amaze me, kiddo. To his horror, Caleb felt his eyes begin to well up again. He ducked his head, fiddling with the drawstring of his pajama pants. I just, I don't know where to go from here, he admitted, his voice thin and thready. Like, what am I supposed to do now? How do I? He gestured vaguely at himself, 
words failing. One step at a time, Janet said gently. She reached out to cup his face in her hands, thumbs smoothing over his cheekbones. There's no deadline here, Caleb. We go at your pace and we figure it out as we go. I've already been doing some research and there are so many resources out there. Support groups, counselors who specialize in gender issues. Whenever you're ready, we can look into it together. She paused, studying his face. I want you to know, too, that, that if you do decide transitioning is what you need, I will support you 100%. Hormone therapy, new clothes, a new name, whatever it takes to help you feel at home in your skin. I've got your back, no matter what. A single tear slipped free, tracing a hot path down Caleb's cheek. He let out a shuddering breath, equal parts terrified and exhilarated at the idea of actually transitioning. It seemed like such a huge, impossible thing. But with his mother by his side, he felt the tiniest flicker of hope kindling to life in his chest. Thanks, Mom, he whispered. I, I think I'm going to need some time to process everything. But knowing you're here, that, that helps a lot. That's perfectly understandable, Janet said with an encouraging smile. Like I said, there's no rush. You just focus on taking care of yourself right now. She leaned in and pressed a smacking kiss to his forehead, making him squawk in half-hearted protest. What do you say we have a lazy day, huh? We can stay in our PJs, eat junk food, watch terrible movies, give that overworked brain of yours a chance to rest. That, that actually sounds really nice, Caleb admitted. The thought of facing the outside world, even just to run errands or see friends, made his stomach churn anxiously. Hunkering down in the safety of home sounded heavenly. Then that's the plan, Janet said decisively. You pick the first movie, I'll go raid the snack stash. She gave him one last quick hug, then headed for the door, leaving Caleb alone with his thoughts. He flopped back against the pillows, blowing out a long breath and trying to wrap his mind around the monumental shift his life had just taken. In the span of a single night, the burden he'd carried alone for so long had been shared, the secret shame transmuted into something almost hopeful. He still couldn't quite picture the path forward, but for the first time, it felt like there might actually be one. His gaze landed on his closet door, slightly ajar, the edge of yellow fabric just visible in the gap. Biting his lip, Caleb stood up and crossed the room, reaching out to catch the skirt between his fingers. The material was soft and cool, slippery beneath his touch. Slowly, reverently, he took it off the hanger and held it up, letting it unfurl to its full length. In the light of day, without the haze of panic clouding his vision, it really was a beautiful thing. The buttery color, the delicate flower print, the swishy drape of the skirt. It called to something deep inside him, some long-buried wisp of yearning. Hands shaking only slightly, Caleb stepped into the skirt and pulled it up over his hips, fumbling with the zipper. The waistband settled snugly against his skin, the hem swishing around his calves. Heart pounding, he turned to face the mirror. The boy looking back at him was undeniably masculine, all sharp angles and hard planes. But there was something softer, too, in the flow of fabric over his legs, the shy quirk of his lips. It was a tiny glimpse of the girl he knew lived under his skin, the self he'd never dared hope could see the light of day. Caleb, you coming, sweetie? His mother's voice floated up the stairs, startling him from his reverie. Be right there, he called back. With a final glance at his reflection, Caleb carefully removed the skirt and hung it back in the closet, smoothing out the wrinkles with a reverent hand. Then he grabbed a hoodie and padded downstairs to join his mom on the couch. As the day passed in a haze of B-movies and junk food, Caleb found himself sneaking glances at his mother, trying to decipher her expression. But every time he found only calm acceptance, an unruffled steadiness that slowly began to quiet his own anxiety. They didn't talk anymore about his revelation, an unspoken agreement to table the heavy stuff for later. But Janet kept finding small ways to show her support, little gestures that spoke louder than words. 
a gentle touch on his arm, an encouraging smile when he made a joke, an extra helping of his favorite snacks. By the time evening rolled around and Caleb was yawning his way through the fifth cheesy horror flick, he felt safer and more settled than he had in years. When Janet finally shooed him off to bed, he hugged her hard, face pressed into her shoulder. Love you, Mom, he mumbled, voice muffled by her sweater. Thanks for, for everything. Janet squeezed him back just as fiercely. I love you too, my brave girl, she whispered more than anything in this world. Caleb's breath caught at the effortless shift in pronouns, tears threatening for the umpteenth time that day. He held on an extra beat before pulling away and traipsing upstairs to bed. Sleep came quickly, the emotional upheaval of the past 24 hours leaving him wrung out and drowsy. But for the first time in a long time, Caleb's rest was deep and dreamless, untainted by the anxieties that usually plagued him. The next morning dawned crisp and cool, the kind of fall day that begged to be spent outside. Over breakfast, Janet suggested a trip to the mall, couching it in terms of needing to pick up some groceries. But there was a deliberate casualness to her tone that told Caleb she had an ulterior motive. I thought maybe we could swing by a few clothing stores while we're there she said, carefully not looking at him as she doctored her coffee. See if anything catches your eye. Caleb froze with a spoonful of cereal halfway to his mouth, his stomach giving a nervous little swoop. He forced himself to finish the bite, chewing slowly to buy himself time. It wasn't that he didn't want to look at clothes. The idea of browsing through racks of skirts and dresses, imagining himself in them, sent a secret thrill zinging through him but the thought of doing it in public, where anyone could see, made his palms sweat and his heart race. As if sensing his trepidation, Janet reached across the table to lay a hand over his. We don't have to if you're not ready, she said gently. I just thought it might be fun to look. And if you do see something you like, we can always grab it to try on at home. No pressure. Caleb blew out a breath, trying to settle his jangling nerves. He trusted his mother not to push him into anything he wasn't comfortable with, and the lure of new feminine clothes was hard to resist. Okay, he said finally, giving her a quick, tremulous smile. Yeah, let's, let's do it. It'll be good for me to get out of the house anyway. Janet beamed at him, squeezing his hand. Whenever you're ready, sweetheart, there's no rush. An hour later, they were wandering through the mall, Janet with a determined gleam in her eye that told Caleb she was on a mission. Janet led the way into a trendy boutique, the kind of place Caleb had always avoided like the plague, intimidated by the endless racks of frilly feminine clothing. But now, with his mother by his side and a tentative new understanding of himself, the store took on a different light. Take your time, Janet encouraged, giving Caleb's hand a quick squeeze before releasing it. Look around. See if anything catches your eye. I'll be right here if you need me. Caleb nodded, swallowing hard against the sudden dryness in his throat. He felt conspicuous and out of place, sure that everyone must be staring at the boy in the girls' section. But a surreptitious glance around showed that no one was paying him any mind, the other shoppers intent on their own pursuits. Slowly, hesitantly, he began to browse the racks, running his fingers over the soft fabrics and delicate prints. A display of gauzy sundresses in sherbet hues caught his eye, and he paused to examine them more closely. They were beautiful, ethereal, like something a fairy might wear. He couldn't imagine ever being brave enough to don one himself. Those are pretty, Janet commented from behind him, making him startle. The pink one would look lovely with your coloring. Caleb felt his face heat, both at the compliment and the implication that he might actually wear a dress. I don't know, he demurred, turning away from the display. I'm not sure I'm ready for something that, that obvious. That's okay, Janet assured him. There's no rule that says you have to jump straight to dresses. Why don't we look at some tops and skirts first? See how those feel. Caleb nodded, relieved. 
Separates seemed less daunting, more mix and match. He could ease into things gradually, build a feminine wardrobe piece by piece. They spent the next hour combing through the racks, Janet holding up options for Caleb's appraisal and adding the ones that made his eyes light up to a growing pile over her arm. Soft, drapey blouses in muted jewel tones, fluttery skirts that brushed his calves, even a few dresses, though Caleb couldn't quite bring himself to picture wearing them yet. By the time they headed for the register, Caleb was buzzing with a strange mixture of excitement and nerves. The clothes felt like a tangible step forward, a way to try on this new identity in the safety of his own room. But the sheer number of bags made the whole thing feel very real and a little overwhelming. I'm proud of you, Janet said quietly as they waited in line, bumping her shoulder against his. I know this isn't easy, but you're being so brave, honey. Caleb ducked his head, feeling his cheeks warm at the praise. Thanks, Mom, for, for all of this. I couldn't do it without you. Janet just smiled, reaching out to smooth a hand over his hair. You never have to thank me for loving and supporting you, Caleb. That's just what moms do. The ride home was quiet. Caleb lost in thought as he watched the scenery roll by outside the window. He kept sneaking glances at the bags nestled in the back seat, a fluttery feeling in his stomach every time he caught a glimpse of bright fabrics. As Janet turned onto their street, Caleb cleared his throat, working up the nerve to voice the request that had been building since the boutique. Hey, Mom, could we, could we maybe stop at the drugstore on the way home? There's some stuff I think I need to get. Janet glanced over at him, curiosity and mild concern warring on her face. Of course, sweetie, what kind of stuff? Caleb averted his eyes, worrying his lower lip between his teeth. Just, you know, girl stuff. Understanding dawned in Janet's expression. Ah, got it. No problem at all. We'll make a quick stop. Fifteen minutes later, they were browsing the aisles of the local CVS, Caleb trying very hard to look like he belonged there. With his mother's gentle guidance, he filled a basket with the strange and intimidating accoutrements of femininity, makeup, nail polish, silky underthings. The total at the register made him blanch, but Janet just smiled and handed over her credit card without hesitation. Back at home, Caleb helped his mother carry in the bags, feeling a little dazed by the sudden influx of girly paraphernalia. He kept waiting for the panic to set in, the sense that this was all a terrible mistake. But it never came. Instead, there was a cautious warmth blooming in his chest, the barest unfurling of something that might be hope. Why don't you go try on some of your new things? Janet suggested as they finished putting away the few actual groceries they'd bought. See how they feel. I'll be down here if you need any help. Caleb bit his lip, fingers tightening around the handles of the boutique bags. Actually, I was wondering if maybe you could help me with something first. At Janet's curious look, he forged ahead, the words coming out in a nervous rush. It's just, I've been thinking about, about my name and what I want to be called now. Janet's eyes widened slightly, but she just nodded, encouraging. Okay, did you have something in mind? Caleb swallowed, mouth suddenly dry. He'd been turning it over in his head for weeks, this new name that felt so right, but saying it out loud made it real in a way that was both exhilarating and terrifying. Kalen, he said softly, testing the shape of it on his tongue. I think, I think I want to be Kalen. Janet's face split into a radiant smile. Kailan, she repeated, slow and savoring. That's a beautiful name, sweetheart. Is that spelled the Irish way with the A-I? Caleb nodded, an answering grin tugging at his lips. Trust his mother to zero in on the linguistic details. Yeah, I looked up the meaning and I really liked it. It means girl or fair and slender. He ducked his head, feeling suddenly shy. It just, it felt like me, you know? It suits you perfectly. Janet said warmly. She reached out to cup Caleb's face in her hands, eyes shining with unshed tears. My brave, beautiful daughter, Kaylin. I am so incredibly proud of you, honey. 
Kaylin felt something flutter loose in her chest at the casual, unmistakable use of female pronouns. Her own eyes burned, throat tightening with emotion. Thanks, Mom, she managed, voice wavering only slightly. For, for everything. I love you so much. Janet folded her into a tight hug, one hand cradling the back of Kailan's head like she was something infinitely precious. I love you too, my girl, more than anything in this world. They stayed like that for a long moment, just breathing each other in. When they finally pulled apart, Janet wiped surreptitiously at her eyes, giving Kylan a watery smile. Go on and try out your new clothes, she urged, giving her a gentle push toward the stairs. I want a fashion show later, okay? Kylan grinned, giddy excitement bubbling up in her chest. You got it. Prepare to be dazzled. Thanks for watching. Check out Patreon if you want to have early access to the other parts. If not, it will be online in a couple of days.